I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Arakwell people of the Bunjalung Nation, and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Human Design Podcast with me, your host, Emma Dunwoody. I'm a qualified master coach and human behavior specialist, as well as being a qualified human design coach. And I work with clients every single day to answer the big questions. Who am I? Why am I here? And what is my purpose? I also assist them to transition from the person they think they should be to the person they really are on the inside. I teach people how to actually live their design instead of just knowing it. And if this is something that you want to do too, well, stay tuned or reach out for private coaching or human design unpacks where I show you exactly how to live your design. Hey, before we get into today's episode, I want to share an incredible opportunity for you to create what I believe is one of the most powerful foundations to transformation, happiness, well-being, vitality, abundance, all of these incredible results that I've experienced over the last number of years. And that is with the FLFE. I know, if you've been around a while, you've heard me bang on about it. But now I'm working with these guys because I believe so strongly in this business. In 2019, we put the FLFE, the Focused Life Force Energy, onto our home. And from that point, everything in my life amplified in a good way. And we're talking about a time in the world where everyone was freaking out. Uh, We were living in lockdown. Everything felt challenging. Yet myself and my family seemed to be having the time of our life. I went from $35,000 to $350,000 that year in my business, not to mention the improved relationships, um, the harmony within our family, um, the health that I've watched this FLFE help me create and amplify, even healing things like broken bones and childhood asthma. It has been such an incredibly impactful thing um, in my life and my world. I mean, in lockdown, I didn't even want to leave the house. None of us did. Like we were the only people who were really happy to be locked in a house, cut off from everybody because the FLFE felt so incredibly good. Now, It's my belief that the way that this really works is because we're operating from this higher consciousness, it it puts us in this place where it's like living and being and working and acting from a temple. How is that a good thing? Well, that means that we have access to higher frequency, higher consciousness. It means that every question we ask, we're going to get a higher frequency answer. Every time we want to heal something in our body, we have a higher frequency energy behind our healing. Everything gets amplified because everything is higher on the consciousness scale, meaning that we get where we want to go faster. And look, that's really been my results. I think one of the things that I love so much about it is being, um, is noticing how much I really trust love and back myself. And I really think this has got so much to do with it. My plants are thriving. My animals are thriving. My kids are thriving. We're all thriving because of this FLFE. And I really believe that it is fundamental for any transformational journey and really vitality and spiritual evolution for everyone. So if you're curious, go check out the links in the show notes. You can do your free trial no obligation, no credit card, no nothing like that. And then if you decide to sign up, it's super cheap. It's less than a coffee a day a week. It's a really, really affordable, powerful thing that you can do for yourself to completely transform your life. So go check it out. Enjoy today's episode. Hey, hey, and welcome to this episode. Well, we've made it to 300. Yeah. 300 episodes and I am super excited to share with you today five tips that I think are incredibly powerful that have helped me on this journey that I'm on to transcend or transcend uh, a conditioned life. All right, so I'm going to dive into that today. Now, in case you haven't heard, I am running a masterclass. It's actually on this Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. Sydney time. I'm going to put the link in the show notes so you can get all the exact details. And it's all about discovering your purpose with human design. So if that sounds like something that you would love to discover and have an experience and 
align to your purpose through your design, then follow the link. Come and join us. It's going to be epic. So, yeah. Now, today, I want to talk about five tips that have really helped me transcend my conditioned life. Now, many of you already know that my story really, well, it began when I was born, obviously, but it began more significantly when I was diagnosed with depression and panic disorder at 28. I was really lost and I was living a highly conditioned life. I was doing the things I thought I should do, being the person I thought I should be, um, creating a life I thought I should create. And ultimately, I found myself in the deepest, darkest depression and panic disorder. So 20 years later, I have been really navigating this journey and running strategies over and over again, having the opportunity to experiment with so many ideas and concepts and and things out there that today I just want to give you five of what I think are the most powerful tips that are going to help you transcend your conditioned life. All right, so let's dive in. Number one is you must realize that you are the creator of your reality. Okay, now I remember when I first heard this, and I'm pretty sure it was Tony Robbins that I heard this from, and it was like a punch in the guts because I was like, what, I'm creating this? No, I'm not. Like, I have no idea how I got here. How could this be me creating it? This has happened to me, and this has happened to me, and this person did this to me, and then it dawned on me. Okay. What this responsibility piece means is that I have to stop giving my power away to everybody else, take responsibility for the life that I've created and the meanings I've attributed to the good, the bad and the ugly that's happened in my life and start to realize that it's up to me to create those meanings. It's up to me to focus on what I want to focus on. It's up to me to get conscious of unconscious beliefs and programming and patterns that are no longer serving me, that are unresourceful. And it's up to me to rewire my brain. It's up to me to heal my trauma. And it's up to me to turn up consistently, day in, day out, even on the days I fall down, even when I feel I'm going backwards, even when my ego's screaming at me that this isn't working, to just consistently keep keep showing up for myself responsibility has been the number one thing I think that's changed my life. Really understanding this dynamic of am I in my power or am I giving my power away? Because when you're taking full responsibility, you're in your power. It means that you have choice. You have um, the ability to do something different. And sometimes we can't do something different, but we can make it mean something different. And if you're one of those people out there going, yeah, but... And then there's some story that you've been telling yourself over and over and over again. I got to tell you, there's always another way. I mean, if you need proof, go and get the book, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And he basically talks about how he chose his own reality while being in a concentration camp in World War II. And like, if he can do it in that environment, we can do it today in the world that we live in. So number one is all about when we say we re- you must realize that you are the creator of your reality, it's all about taking responsibility for the way you perceive the world and what you choose to believe about yourself, the world, others. Um, and if you don't like it, if you don't like your reality, it's the decision to go and choose something else, do something else, be something else. You've got this. The everything you need is inside of you. You can navigate anything. The universe will never give you anything you can't handle. So straight away, this is all about taking responsibility because instead of choosing a belief that is like, this always happens to me, choose a belief that says, the universe will never deliver me anything I can't handle, which presupposes whatever it is in front of you, you can handle it. That's number one. Number two, this one is one that is seems easy when you first put it out there, but it's actually really challenging. And that is discover what is it that you want your life to be or to be like or to be about. This is all about focusing on what you do want. 
about finding meaning, about finding purpose, about finding what lights you up, uh, what you want to obsess about, what turns you on, what excites you. What do you want your life to be about? How do you want to feel? What do you want to experience? Now, this seems really easy and simple at the outset. However, we're not actually designed that way. Our brain has this, this thing called the negativity bias, which means that unless we consciously choose to focus on what we want, it will default to what we don't want, what's dangerous, what could hurt us, what could go wrong. So this is a habit that we have to build. For all the years and the thousands of hours I've done coaching people, when I ask them this simple question, what do you want? They will endlessly go on about what they don't want. And this is where you can see straight away. And maybe you're journaling along or you're doing this exercise as we go. And the first thing that pops into your mind is, well, I don't want a relationship like this anymore. I don't want this job. It sucks. I don't want to be tired all the time. Pay attention because all of this is giving you evidence of what you do want. Okay. A different job, a different relationship to be able to recover, whatever it is. So this process of really discovering what you want your life to be all about, how you want to feel, what you want to do, who you want to be, this can be started, or at least this journey to discover this can be started from the place of not knowing, or at least this perceived place of not knowing, of knowing what you don't want, and then having a look at the opposite of what you don't want. But getting clear on what you do want is a very, very, very important journey. Don't get stuck in needing the details, the clarities, the timelines, all of those things, because it's just the ego trying to control your external reality. It's trying to control how these come into your reality, how you manifest, all those things. Don't worry about that. But just make sure it's fun and light and you consciously choose as often as possible to focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Uh, one of the metaphors I love to use, you would have heard me say it before if you've listened for a while, is I've always thought that at our supermarket, we've got a big supermarket chain here, and they put signs up everywhere that says, don't forget your green bags. And I'm like, imagine if they flip that to make sure you remember your green bags. They're focusing on what they want. They'll get more of what they want. Instead of focusing on people forgetting their bags, which they will get more of. All right. So discover, dive deep into what do you want your life to be about? Number three, well, it's all about fear. It's about changing the paradigm with fear. Understanding, as I said in the last episode, and if you want more on this, go and listen to the last episode, you've got to change your relationship to fear because fear should not be stopping you unless it's stopping you from stepping in front of a moving train. It is something that you must heal your relationship with. You must understand that it's always going to be in there. It's always going to be having an opinion. It's always going to be playing along. However, there are so many things, check out all the episodes of the podcast, that you can be doing to change your relationship with fear. What do I mean by that? When I was deep in depression and panic disorder, I would avoid the things I was afraid of. I, was a, I would avoid admitting that I was unhappy and didn't want to live where we were living. I was avoiding having conversations that I didn't want to have, even though I knew I needed to have them. I was avoiding saying that even though I've tried three different jobs, three different careers, I still wasn't happy. So fear stopped me being really honest with myself and with others. It, it kept me in a place where I felt unconsciously, certainly not consciously, but I felt unconsciously safe because I didn't have to admit the truth that was going on inside of me and therefore potentially create havoc, change, transformation that might lead to loss, grief, um, and a lot of things that my ego didn't like. So these days, so, so back then, anything that I was afraid of, I was afraid of heights. I still have a deal with heights, but just yesterday we went and did this um, treetops thing because it was my youngest son's birthday and that's what he wanted to do. And it didn't even phase me at all. I didn't, no adrenaline, no, no fear actually now I reflect on it. 
And it's because I've spent so many years really identifying, oh, wow, that fear is just stopping me stepping outside of my comfort zone. And especially as a manifesting generator, I know, and this doesn't have to be an MG, it can be any type. But my signature as an MG is satisfaction. The satisfaction I feel when I get out of my comfort zone, I'm freaking winning. You know, if you're a manifester, you're going to feel peace when you get out of your comfort zone and you're in alignment. If you're a projector, you're going to feel success if you get out of your comfort zone in alignment. Um, And if you're a reflector, you're going to feel surprise and delight, right? So pay attention. Pay attention to this new relationship with fear. Fear no longer stops me. And even more than that, I'm okay with it being there. I don't resist it anymore. I see it as something to be curious about, to look into, to lean into, get curious about what those fears are or the handbrake as I often call it. Because within that fear, there's a gift. There's something in there that your psyche doesn't want you to look at. That's why you're afraid of it. So you look in there, you go in there like in... um, Was it Return of the Jedi? I think it was Return of the Jedi where Luke goes into the cave and he sees Darth Vader's helmet, but in the helmet is his face. Like you are the only thing stopping you. You are the fear. So changing your paradigm, changing your relationship with fear is absolutely paramount to transcending a conditioned life because ultimately our conditioning predominantly in the Western world comes from fear. Okay, fear keeps us obedient and compliant and all of those things. So it's very much, in fact, maybe it should have even been number one. It's very important to transcending a conditioned life. Number four. Now, this one I think is really important. I do feel like it's very resonant for me recently. Um, And I think it's also something that as we are on this growth journey, It's so important for us to keep in the back of our mind. And and that is, number four is stop lying to yourself. Have you been on this growth journey and as you grow and evolve personally, spiritually, businessly, (laughs) um, do you find yourself kind of going, okay, yeah, I can fix that. I can fix that to things that there's part of you going, you're not meant to fix it. You're growing. You're evolving. You aren't who you used to be. You have to let it go. Um, and often we already know these things, but we try everything else, the band-aids, um, we try to be, you know, um, the hero. We, we get almost like egoic about, yeah, I can fix everything, anything. I can solve anything. But really the universe is saying, oh, for goodness sake, this is not for fixing. This is not for changing. This is not for developing. This is for letting go. And we often know that inside of us. We often know on some level that we're lying to ourselves, but we're so afraid of what it's going to mean to let go of that thing, to step into the new thing, that we just make excuses. We just try to do, we try to avoid it at all costs, but inevitably it's going to come up. It's going to need letting go of if you want to become who you want to become. So number four should be stop lying to yourself and let go of what you really know you should do let go of. Number five is, I'm sure you're going to guess it, people. It's take imperfect actions towards your dreams. Now, one of the things that human design, I think, is so incredibly brilliant in all of these areas is because it gives us this blueprint. It gives us this almost validation of Yep, that's me. That's how I feel. That's what's important to me. That's the impact I want to have. Yep, they're the themes that keep showing up. Yep, they're all my shadows and fears. Yep. And what can happen is the more we learn, the more knowledge we gain about our human design, it actually stops us. You know, we can go through this whole list and we do the opposite. We give our responsibility away to the knowledge or some teacher or guru. Um, We forget about what we actually want and we focus on what we you know, we shouldn't do and and what our type, you know, our type says we can and can't do. We focus on what we shouldn't and shouldn't do or be or whatever. Um, And we let fear try to decide how we fully embody our design. And at the end of the day, that is also lying to ourselves. That's being really attached to the dogma of human design. So one of the things that I want to say is that this is why I always talk about taking perfect action. Um, and 
you know, this is so important when it comes to your design. Instead of worrying too much about what you should and shouldn't be doing according to the knowledge, your strategy, your authority, your incarnation cross, your de definition, whatever it might be, take imperfect action towards alignment run the experiment, have an experience, and then decide for yourself. The knowledge is just that, it's knowledge. But you're the one who brings it to life. So the moment we take imperfect action, we're changing our relationship with fear, okay, instantly, because we put ourselves back in the power seat. We're heading consciously and from the power seat in the direction of the things that we want to be, do, and have. And of course, this is all about taking responsibility. This is all about being the creator of your own reality. Does that mean sometimes um, a projector is going to take action when there's no clear invitation? Yep, probably. Does that mean that there might be a moment in time where to follow their dreams, a manifesto might people please in another area of their life? Yep, maybe. But those things don't matter. It's the experiment that matters. It's the, it's the results that matter. What matters is not the people pleasing or the lack of an invitation is what happened after you did it? What happened after you took that action? Are you going to do that again? What do you need to tweak and change? More importantly, are you closer or further away from that dream? Because when you take imperfect action, the universe rises up to meet you. When you know what you want, you're taking responsibility, you redefine the relationship you have with fear, and of course, you stop lying to yourself. You, once you take this action, the universe rises up to meet you. Those dreams start to fall into place effortlessly. And that is absolutely my experience. I've had such amazing things happen over the last few years. You know, many of you have been following me for a while. You've heard like I've, I've been on the whole book thing for a while. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write a book. But I've been following my strategy on authority and it hasn't left me time to do those things and um, to, to physically write it and do all, all of that. Even though I know it's happening, I know it's inevitable. And then a few months ago, um, I get a contact through Jenny Crowther. Um, I sign a with a book agent. On the way back from the Camino, I decide to swing past London to meet my book agent. She lines up some publishers. Um, and all these things happen really easily and effortlessly. But I did the things I was afraid of. You know, I reached out. I said, well, I, you know, I made the, um, the effort to show up, to be the version of myself that would already have a book, you know. Um, and then sure enough, we signed with one. So our books, come, my book's coming out in September next year. Oh my God, so exciting. It all just fell in. And it's because of all of these five tips that I've just given you. You know, you guys know that I can be messy. I love that you guys call me authentic. Like I am, I'm so authentic. And part of that is that I take imperfect action, that I keep taking imperfect action, that I know what I want, who I want to be, the impact I want to have. I'm completely mission driven. And it took me years to work these things out. But I didn't let the fear of the lack of clarity about who I wanted to be and the mission that I was on, stop me. I'm like, well, I just know I'm going in this direction. I know I'm going to make a huge impact. That's what I'm here to do. And I feel like I've only just got started, but that's the way I live every day. I'm not going to live this conditioned life anymore. I'm not going to do what I'm told. I'm not going to listen to every expert and run their strategies. I've tried that. It doesn't work. So now I follow my strategy and authority and then the right experts show up, the right strategy for business or the right strategy for writing a book or the right whatever I need shows up. And this is the way we're designed to live. But we have to get out of our own ways. We have to step into the adult role. We have to take responsibility for our lives. And we have to really take an honest look at the things that are holding us back, our shadow, our fears, our trauma. And we have, to, we have to give ourselves what we need to heal, evolve, grow, and be willing to let go of the things that aren't going to let us get to our greatest potential, which I often think is, is the hardest part of all of it. So I trust 
you got what you needed from today's episode. Happy 300th birthday to the Human Design Podcast. I want to say a massive thank you to all of you for listening. You are so incredible and amazing and I love you all. And yeah, I look forward to having you on the next podcast. Bye for now. Thanks everyone for being here all the way to the end of the podcast. I hope you got lots of value out of it. I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. Could I please ask that you share this podcast with friends if you found it valuable? And also, bonus points, could you leave a review for me as well on Apple? It would be greatly appreciated. If at any point you would like to be on the podcast or you've got questions that you'd like me to discuss on the podcast, by all means, get on my socials and DM me. Everything you need is there in the show notes. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.